to GalacticConnection.com, one of the most popular blogs on the World Wide Web today for alternative news. Stay tuned for the latest information on our world shift from enslavement to galactic involvement, as well as current intel on any blockages impeding us from our sovereign birthright. Knowledge and self-mastery are key at this time. Our commitment is to present you with the latest breaking conspiratorial articles, off-world messages, exopolitics, cutting-edge technologies and sciences, and also an ever-significant intertwining of spiritual support and metaphysical scope that one needs to dive down the rabbit hole and search for truth with balance. We are truly on the horizon of a new golden age filled with the promise for more love, worldwide peace, and accelerated intuitive skills where every living being can exist in cohesion and abundance. It is whatever we envision and dream this new world to be. I say to you now, let's redefine the new world to the beginnings of our own precious heaven on earth. Galactic Connection is here to provide the pulse of Mother Earth through an eclectic range of interviews each Tuesday afternoon from 3 to 4.55 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Station 2 on BBS Radio, expanding your perspectives on how we can once and for all take back our freedoms, our joy, and our connection with our mighty I Am Presence. Our intention remains true to connect hearts and minds everywhere in order to obtain global unity and galactic and universal acceptance. Our discussions will continue to cover anything to do with galactic society and our involvement with our galactic brothers and sisters. Our guests are experts in their fields and our radio shows have been coined as some of the most thought-provoking out there. In addition to our daily blog, which runs 365 days a year, we also offer a realm of healing services such as our world-renowned implant removal processes, our spiritual past life clearings, our galactic violet ray alchemy from Alexandra who shares in the lineage of Merlin, and other cutting edge healing technologies. Check our site out at galacticconnection.com now. Sending you a wave of light, love, and inspiration, and a personal hug and thank you for listening to our Galactic Connection radio show and visiting our blog today. Sorry, folks, we had some technical difficulties. Is that surprising? My internet just went dead. Go figure on that one. Anyway, I think what we were talking about is the sun, the moon, and earth and their connection to one another. So just some clarity. When you said that you were actually shown the flying saucer shooting upon the original uh, binary planet, Okay. And you were saying, now, was that the trisexual race that you've been talking about? Okay. Right. Okay. So, times. so it was them. Yep. And Earth. so do me a favor. Now, everybody, this is going to get a little bit creepy, but we need to hear this in order to kind of, yeah, in order to kind of make some sense out of it. So when were you first introduced to this trisexual race? Okay. Myself. You know, um, in the early 60s, I was orbiting the planet, uh, doing somebody's mission or a test mission. I was going 20,000 miles an hour, and I was in the upper atmosphere. It was beautiful. It was crystal clear. The planet was going past underneath me. It was just one of the greatest things ever. Well, of course, the saucer pulled in next to the ship because they always did. And, uh, any high-altitude mission, they were very interested. So it pulled right in just 50 feet away from me in crystal clear air, and I managed to see through the viewport on the saucer that it was, in fact, a huge insectoid life form piloting it. So I came down and explained this, and they were having trouble saying, you mean there was a spider or a bug in the ship with you or inside your helmet or something? And I said, no, no, piloting the saucer. Well, we'd had 50 confirmed sightings of the saucer at close range by other pilots and people. So there was no surprise. But it was quite a surprise to them to, to learn that it was, in fact, an alien insectoid life form. There was some kind of thought that it would be 
cute little green man or even human beings or somebody else piloting these things. But when it turned out to be an insectoid life form, that was rather shocking. And uh, that's when, um, you know, everybody started to get on to uh, the idea of going to Mars and, and trying to find out what, what these things were and where their home base was because we couldn't get within 10 miles of them. They would just fly off at 20,000 miles an hour at a funny angle and be gone. And, and so that's the first time that I ever saw Interesting. a, a non-human entity piloting a flying uh, ship, right? Then we saw the evidence in the concealed, the buried room that had been dug up that was uh, inarguable evidence of these creatures set up on Mars. And so then we, uh, we went up there, and, um, and that's when I got to actually be in their vehicle and fly around with them and, you know, have them show us things and, uh, and, and do what we told them. In fact, they were told, go around with these Earth people and, and do what they tell you, right? Which would include knocking down all of this stuff uh, all of this horrible stuff on Mars and covering it over. Well, in retrospect, uh, I think we were duped into doing that because that's what they want to do is, is conceal their presence in the entire solar system the same way they did in, um, on, the, on the ancient Earth. Having said that, I mean, they're no longer um, open enemies like they were for so many uh, centuries. Um, the story I heard was, for example, the old male alien, flying saucer alien, the last thing he really remembers about the Earth, caring much about the Earth, was around the time of Mickey Mouse, which was around the 1920s or 30s. So their interest and their, their involvement here started to wane a bit 70, 80 years ago. Okay? But right up through the 50s, we still had this, uh, this presence. Meaning they had people and large insect life forms down on the earth, uh, taking care of business for them, concealing themselves, um, you know, acting from inside government programs and military programs and wow. every aspect of society that they could be involved in, right? So I can't clearly remember the first time I talked to them. Um, Probably on the second Mars mission was the first time that we were able to actually sit and, and deal directly with them. Wow. So yeah. they, so you're basically saying they've been here at least since the 1920s. Oh, no. That, the 1920s would be the end of a 20,000-year presence here. They've been here since well before biblical times. They've been here since uh, earlier planets. They've been out through all through the galaxy like I said, their their history is nine hundred thousand years. Wow. And they've had they've had the space tech, travel technology for fifty, a hundred, two hundred thousand years. They are ancient. Now, to be such a uh, force, as you say, and to be such kind of like they put off this dread type of essence and energy. Yeah. How was it possible to get them to be escorted out of this? Solar system. Well, you needed races who were equally powerful, who could fly with them, which is, which is, uh, <laughs> we can't do it, and never probably will be able to fly like that, uh, without building spaceships that are so much more protected and huge. You know, they'd have to be, uh, we'd have to build a ship ten times as large as theirs in order to be able to do what they do, because they're so so much more uh, physically. Uh, powerful and uh, are able to fly like a wasp, basically, uh, in this vehicle. Plus, they have the wormhole technology, which is a whole separate issue, and are just basically superior in, in a lot of ways, simply because they've had hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, you know, before we ever became conscious. That is really interesting. So, birding question. How do the Anunnaki fit into this? I don't know. Uh, you'd have to define them for me just to get up to date. I've huh. read a bunch, but there's different opinions. Again, it's not something I'm a yeah. hands-on, have a 
I won't. Right, that you haven't truly experienced yourself. Right. Now, and I would, are, is this trisexual race, uh, are they affiliated with those running the Vatican? No. They are affiliated with nobody. <laughs> really? Okay. Other than they control everybody or they don't play. Wow. Okay. They are the superior top of the food, food chain, chain or they're nothing. They were given the option to stay here um, if they would follow the rules. A, no preying on human beings or the animals or any of the creatures on Earth or Mars anymore. Well, they're like, no, we'll just take our 30 flying saucers and head for some open space because they like to take planets and build them up in their image and control absolutely everything below them, right? That would include all the insect life forms, which gives them control over any of the smaller groups like say reptilians mammals or anything like that this is the ancient galaxy these creatures come from um, a part of space uh, where the radiation and the gravity is beyond our ability to to survive for an instant so they are very much more powerful uh, physically much more ancient um, and you know in keeping with what people would think of as insect mentality they don't really have feelings, especially the ancient forms, um, like we think of it. Now, they've learned slowly and steadily how they have evolved, too. Um, originally, the war, which was over the Earth, for possession of the Earth that caused the sister planet to ex explode, was between two only of these uh, creatures, wow. two of the flying saucers. And... Um, why that far back in history they were just uh, very savage very powerful and people had nothing we, we didn't have um, engines or flight or machines or anything at all so they were so much superior to us so it was like course. slaughter right it was well like... they didn't they but they didn't we were they didn't slaughter us they never were cruel or evil in that they would just do destruction for no reason they always set up these wars that were you know something you could bet on effectively the two saucers would have an army of 10,000 and an army of 10,000 and they would set them against each other and so they're very highly highly intelligent uh, their IQs three or four times human and they just lacked feelings right and again if you own a solar system you own billions of creatures, so there's no problem putting 10,000 against 10,000 and, uh, you know, and maybe setting up some gladiatorial arenas and some other fun over here. Well, they were pretty cruel from our, by any of our standards, to the point of Mars was effectively hell. And I do mean the hell of legend, of, of uh, you know, that's where the devil takes you to burn, uh, was in fact the planet Mars. Wow. So it kind of sounds a lot like the cabal today where we're just on this chessboard and they've decided I'm going to have this country go to war with this country just so we can make a lot of money and power and we can eat, feed off the energy of the dead, yep. the, you know, the grief. The hot that. spot of the world. There's always a hot spot. They've always kept a hot spot. And, um, what do you mean no. by that? What do you mean by uh, that? There's always somewhere where it's boiling and there can be war land war, the population forced to move, bombing, you know, <laughs> attacks from, uh, you know, religious groups that are, okay. or whatever it is, there's always a hot spot. Like you say, they're going to feed off of the money from the military uh, equipment and, you know, having to relocate all these people over here. Maybe we can use them to now to do this or that. Like you say, a chessboard uh, um, arena, if you will. Well, that's our history going all the way back. Wow. And so it's very hard to ditch that. And it's very hard to ditch this uh, ancient evil presence. Well, it turns out that the human beings aren't really um, necessarily the cause of that. I don't think many people are insane and want to enslave other races. <laughs> I really don't. I think it's been, you know, this ancient uh, dark presence. And so while it looks like the world is is really in bad shape these days it's not compared to how it's been for the previous 
many, many thousands of years. It's just been war. You know, you know this is uncanny because I have spoken with several people, one in particular that I'm thinking of that has received uh, direct psionic uh, visions of this malevolent force and how this malevolent force has gone through multiple universes, they've stated, not just solar systems. And they kind of described it as they just kind of suck the life force out of that sphere of oh now you hit yeah okay so uh when i was told this i had a couple sleepless nights trying to sucking the life force out is very real but it's not them doing this is trisexual saucer aliens you can talk to them you know they know some great jokes they've been around forever (laughs) they've had millions and millions of human beings through their hands they know us better than we know ourselves and all the other races, so there's an you know there's a dark side and a light side to it. But sucking the energy and life force out of people, uh, legends of vampires and ghosts and spirits and that, very real. Turns out that this planet has been a wild planet by definition for many tens of thousands of years. Now any planet like that that's a you know beautiful thick oxygen and life and uh, you know um, biodiverse. Biodiverse or any any planet like that that's yeah. very alive, um, especially in ancient times, will attract life forms, which you could think of as space parasites, if you will. Okay. Now these are creatures that are not fully material. Okay. Okay. Much as you can think of a light being like the Greys or whatever the their probes were, they were not physically solid all the time. So we have had these life forms here that are in fact energy vampires uh, back through history. right? And they might live in a swamp, they might come out at night and settle on your house and they're basically just very simple life forms that will suck up any electrical, electrochemical life force or energy. If you will, it's not really that mysterious. Now when the greys showed up here and started cleaning up or helping us get rid of this ancient um, presence, one of the first things that they pointed out was that we do have these creatures here that have drifted in over the hundreds of thousands of years and are on this planet and we don't believe in them. We think they're ghosts. We think they're, they're uh, you know, immaterial beings that have snuck through from some evil place and are sucking our life energy. True. Very true. But they're just a uh, very strange form of life that has, has been on this, that has drifted into this wild planet. They threw out a bunch of the, the really big ones, because they can be very large and just hover around. <laughs> no one will believe in them, right? Because there's no such thing as a creature that looks like a mist hovering <laughs> over the swamp, right? Okay? It's at that level where you just go, no, come on. But, in fact, these things are real, and they do suck up so-called life force, electrical, chemical energy. A whole bunch of them were thrown off planet Earth. And there's even some pictures somewhere where you go, what the hell is that floating out in space somewhere between here and, and, you know, nowhere? Well, that's one of these things that was judged to be fully parasitic on the planet Earth and on the life forms and gave nothing back. And they said, no, this is a space tick basically, or flea, you know, or a parasite on the planet Earth. Get rid of it, you know, chase it out into space and make it drift off to the Pleiades. They can drift through space for centuries and not die as long as they have this, you know, this energy. So very, very strange creatures sort of beyond the pale of uh, biology. You can't really have a floating mist-like creature, but in fact we did. Happen. Well, they show up in that's all one. different forms, right? I mean, that's, that's right. There are different types of them. And I was showing this and just went, you've got to be kidding me. You know, those are like, what are those? You know, well, those are just life forms that exist somewhere in this unbelievably ancient galaxy of ours that have drifted into this wild solar system over the last million years. And are just sort of, you know, parasitic on the other life forms here. 
So with assistance from the greys or, or whatever we're calling them, um, a whole bunch of them were chased off of the planet Earth within the last 50 years. That sums up a lot of stuff. And, I, yeah. I, and the reason I say that, too, is because there are very famous paintings that go all the way back to the Renaissance that show that these kind of worm-like things are floating down through, through the sky to the planet. Why not? And they also go into the whole thing about how the core reason for any dissonance in this sphere is a virus. Well, absolutely, they would be a big drain and, you know, would cause all kinds of trouble and no one would know what they were or even right. believe in them. Now, I think as the further you go back into ancient times, you find that people were so, so-called superstitious were, in fact, just aware of a lot more, um, you know, ready to believe in, in uh, what they saw and experienced rather than what they've been told. And um, most of the people on Earth in ancient times knew for a fact, of course, that the flying saucers were, were up there and could come at any time and take you away. And then also these other creatures um, were, were real. And uh, how we lost that is, is the story of how they covered their presence here and invented this whole reality, you know, where, oh, we know everything and science explains everything. Mm-hmm. And don't worry about that. There's no monsters. There's no ghosts. There's no anything. Well, there are creatures that, that may as well be ghosts. Um, they're just a lot less tangible than us, yet they're still alive somehow. Wow. That, that's bringing up a couple things. I mean, number one, uh, my father had had several uh, ET encounters mm-hmm. uh, when he was flying his bird. Okay. Sure. Looked out the window and he saw a saucer. Of course. Appeared really out of nowhere. They're not afraid of us. <laughs> no. And it just would, it would hover and then it would just, it would be gone. Yep. So that's very interesting. Uh, God, so many things are flying through my head. Now, you brought up something about the carvings on the planet of Mars and how they were shaped like all different kinds of insect toy type beings. Yep. And one thing that really hit me when I was in Zimbabwe last year, mm-hmm. we were cruising through this one particular area and they had these mounds, these mountain mounds. Now the, the, the land was completely flat, but there would be just, it almost looked like, you know, I don't know, a big blob, but it was a mountain and they were very clearly carved. Yes. Very clearly carved, but nobody could see it because trees and bushes and all this stuff had grown on top of it. It was obvious to me yeah well yes if you could see the um, ancient psionic memories and maybe you will someday and you're back on the ancient earth the whole planet was in their image and that includes entire mountainsides with uh, carvings larger than anything we've ever made and there were thousands and thousands of them and teams of people their humanoid drones if you will down on the earth were sent around with their chisels and hammers to eliminate the image of the devil from the surface of the planet. We must, you know, remove its presence, right? And they went around for years, decades and years, going around, chipping away the whole sides of mountains and statues and just any evidence whatsoever of these creatures. If you look at mountains now, you can see, gee, you know, if that was just a little bit more together and hadn't been all... You could see that that might be all carved on such a grand scale that you just can't believe it it, it ever could have been that way. So the early Earth was spectacular beyond beyond belief, you know, beyond beyond Mars even, and it was all um, covered over and chipped away and destroyed and stories created. That's incredible. Cover it, you know. As we all you know know, we sort of know that there's. In the past, there's when you see the ancient stone cities and, and the carvings and the statues and stuff from ancient times, you go, gee, that's kind of better than a lot of the stuff today. What, what are we missing? How could that possibly be going on? Right. And there's no records 
specific records left, say, of the Great Pyramid, for example. You know, that should be the most important thing that ever happened, yet it's all just kind of gone, you know? Yeah. The ancient stuff. So that's Well, just- and think about it, Jack. Think about how we read about the, the burning of all the books and scrolls in the Library of Alexandria. I mean, these were all very deliberate attempts to keep that uh, exposure and free sharing of information t- to the entire world. Yes, indeed. You know? And the story of the Great Pyramid and... <laughs> itself is enough to uh, it's just unbelievable you know because we were showing that and uh, well go ahead share it with us because okay. you obviously right. have far more information now, on this than I do over the centuries of course other creatures have come here besides just besides the, the saucers they would allow anyone to come through take some specimens or some supplies and fly on or you know all kinds of things could drop by over the, well uh, the, what I was showing was an alien humanoid was cast away here, was stranded on this planet by people who or creatures who meant him no, you know, who wanted to, uh, I don't know what was going on, but they abandoned this, this humanoid here on the surface. Now his friends are out there looking for him, but he's been abandoned on the earth with all of these primitive creatures around, okay? Very tall humanoid creature, very impressive. So, of course, he gains total power and total control over basically ancient Egypt, whatever part of the world that was called at that time. And he builds the pyramid. <laughs> you know, he builds the Great Pyramid, right? And into it, he puts that tunnel going up at that angle that points at whatever part of space. You can hear that story about Orion. I uh, forget what part of space it points at. Well, in fact, that's exactly what happened. He built that thing with that tunnel so that he could send a psionic memory. That would be, not a memory, but a, a message that would be channeled through that. And that was about as the best he could do on this primitive planet as far as getting a message sent out to the area of space that he wanted to send it to where he knew his buddies were looking for him. Okay? That simple. And <clears throat> sure enough, he got this thing built and sent this message off, but they were there right away within days or weeks anyway because they were looking for him in that part of space and they came down and went gee what have you been doing here with these he said well i had to do something while i was here (laughs) this and blah 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 i said okay we're leaving now bye and there went most of the intelligent on the earth so one of the pharaohs apparently was a humanoid from somewhere else who was cast away here and to kill off the time that he was here he built the great pyramid or one like it or others like it, and put this way of sending a message out, which which didn't turn out to be even that necessary because they came and rescued him anyway. And so you watch that memory and you just go, you oh, come on, you know, that can't be right. We've got this hierarchy of all of this human evolution up to the building these pyramids and so forth. It's like, no, that was just a one-off deal where somebody was abandoned here, okay? Now, it goes on, and before that, character left here, they talked to him and said, look, you know, don't just abandon us here. You're just the smartest guy. You've taught us all of this stuff. And he's like, no, sorry, I'm not from here, you know. But there you go. There's one instance of uh, humanoid uh, presence here on the earth that was here and, uh, and then gone, you know. And there's been others, and there's been other creatures that have dropped by here, and, you know, legends have been created and, and kept alive and changed to this day. And um, basically, they have all of these records, right? So when I when I tell this stuff, it's like there might be. I can't remember the details. I can't remember, you know, what they called it. But all of this is done with the idea that these records will become available eventually, and we'll be able to see that in fact it was humanoid here who really increased our awareness of how to build things and do things and then left you know and maybe some others came in and it's very complicated long history and if you look at the planet as a uh, big bowl of soup in space that would attract everything for uh, you know a long long way around there's not much trouble believing in in any of it because um, you know the galaxy just doesn't follow our 
ideas. It <laughs> does what it does, you know, and it doesn't always have to make sense. But that story of the of the Great Pyramid was just, I couldn't believe it. You know? <laughs> it would be an alien uh, humanoid, very tall and impressive, you know, looking, who would get cast away here and just go, okay, I got to work with these creatures. You, let's go. <laughs> get those elephants over here. Get those giant human beings over here lifting bricks. And sure enough, the last giants, I believe it was four of them, and the last two actually died from working on that great pyramid. Oh, wow. They were killed off by being overworked. Both of them had to eat about an ox each a day just to keep their energy at the level where they could stay alive at all. That's terrible. And so it was done using, the Great Pyramid was done using, uh, well, they cast all of the bottom bricks in position, and then they would lift these huge ones that look like humans couldn't do that. Well, they probably couldn't, but with the two giants and with using levers, the rest of the normal people, they did manage to build the thing. And so the, the entire story of the Great Pyramid is up there, and it does involve an alien, but just a one-off alien, you know, not not tied in with the rest of it at all. So this can cause confusion like you can't believe. If you try to put the whole picture together and say, oh, it's all one package, it isn't. Right. It's just, it's just what happened as opposed to, you know, a nice, neat theory. Now, what system was that? I mean, did this was this a race that we would consider to be benevolent that sent this? You know, I believe that it was two humanoid races, and one of them had their hands on somebody who they wanted to, uh, you know, rather than kill him, they were just going to abandon him on this primitive planet, Earth. Whoa. And they knew that his friends would probably find him. It might take ten or twenty years for them to hone in and find him. And he, meanwhile, he's here trying to send a message desperately. And it turns out that these psionic messages, if you can create a long enough tunnel, like he did through that pyramid, you can focus it a lot better and blast it off into space. And hopefully they will be cruising around out in that area looking for you anyway, and they will receive this message, however weak, and, and be able to trace it back to the Earth and find this character, right? Well, you couldn't think that up, you know? Um, and so they just showed me that, and I just went, okay, that's separate from everything else, but what next, you know? You know what, you Jack? They have a lot of stories about uh, supposedly renegade extraterrestrial groups of, of beings crash-landed here. Oh, absolutely. Now, I don't know so much about crash-landed, but another one that I saw was people like to think of the little green men, right? The little yeah. ETs, the cute ones. Well, there was, in fact, a ship that just showed up because I've learned this because one of the questions I asked them of the thoughts written is I said, look, over the your time here, who else showed up? Okay. Well, they explained what the reptilians were and how their presence was always here. And other people are going to be able to talk about that better than me. But at one point, a ship just showed up of little ET guys that would look more like the traditional little green men with, you know, highly energetic and friendly types. They just showed up on the earth and, and were passing through here. So they came down, landed, um, interacted with some people, picked up some children and gave them rides around the planet, did a whole bunch of fun stuff, probably for a few days or less than a week, and just left and have never been back since, right? They showed me that and a couple of other odd occurrences that had happened over the uh, over the millennia of different races being here. But that does not mean that any of them had any influence or control over the overall uh, planet and solar system because they did. It was always their place. And if there was reptilians, it was because they were allowed in certain areas in certain ways. And uh, no exceptions because... You know, insect reality is very, very logical and very hierarchical. And if you're the top predator, you, you have control all the way down to the ground Interesting. over every other type of life form in the solar system. Sounds so, a lot know. like our cabal. It does, and it sounds like insect is what it is. It's like an insect hive, and that's our ancient mind. And then we have the reptilian mind, which is much more, you know, me, personal, and sure. not 
survival, survival. Yeah, not a social mentality, um, self-interest, and that's much more like the human beings of today, you know, who all figure we're all very special, important. Yeah. You know, we don't have this insect-like thought pattern, even though we behave that way. <laughs> yeah. In many instances, you know. That's just the trip. So. Yeah. Now, do you feel like the reptilians that landed here, because you said basically this was not a reptilian-dominated right. solar system, that, that, that we've kind of been led askew on that, do you feel that that was a, uh, a, a mission gone bad, that the trisexual races uh, sent the reptilians here um, and it ended up really becoming a problem for the humans? It's a problem now because why is there a war up there? You know, why are there people, soldiers up there with rail guns, you know, fighting against lizard men? There was nothing like that going on when we were up there at all. Yeah. There was no reptilians running around dominating the surface. Of the it's pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. I knew about it and they went up there and got themselves, you know, destroyed. Because, I think because they went after that artifact which is part of the saucer technology, and it's a scam. It's, it's not, they're not going to get it, even if they find it. It's not what they think. It's not going to... But that's what they were led to believe. If you could find this, you'd have the secret of the saucer's power. Mm. Gotta go in. They being the reptilians. No, they being the soldiers, though, the super soldiers. The super soldiers, okay. They were told about this artifact. They all went to that cave to try to deal with, you know, get it. Or whatever, and they were slaughtered, and that's yeah. the end of that's the end of that yeah. group. And in fact, that was some kind of a test. It was like, okay, let's see if they'll go after this artifact that will give them power over us, over the other races in the solar system. Let's see if the human beings can can be trusted, or no. They're going to send a thousand soldiers in there to try to get that that thing. And of course, then they're eradicated. You know, it's like, oh no, 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 we don't. Nothing like you is ever going to uh, gain power over over this uh, solar system or these ancient races, right? So, it's uh, like this presence has left physically, but hasn't left on this psionic level, and that's the scariest part of all to me. That's where I lose. My ability to deal with it. I don't know yeah. what to do. It's beyond, beyond, you know. And I, I explained in that video. We brought a couple of the humanoids back, and this is now right in my house. And I'd never experienced anything like this. I'm actually in my mom's house, and all of a sudden, we're going through the wormhole, and we're back on Mars all of a sudden, you know. And there's this uh, situation going on where they're trying to use reptilians to destroy the records that are up there which are stored in these ancient bushes wow. and are stored in the bodies of the ant-like creatures they're trying to wipe them out wipe out a generation or two of ants so the old ones don't remember and get rid of these records of, of us here and, and rewrite the whole thing again and uh, of course there's human beings who would want to go along with that as long as they're you know coming out of it okay so it's incredibly complex and when I got knocked out or more accurately compromised at a certain point where there's technically a war is going on and all of a sudden I'm compromised where everything I know they know because they've come in at night woke me up and asked me all these questions who are your friends who are the greys who's protecting you who's watching you what are you doing you know and I answer all of these questions all of a sudden I wake up the next day and I sort of remember this and say look guys I'm compromised go, don't even contact me again, I'm burnt, I'm done with as far as the war, right? So that's the last time I, uh, I heard anything about it. And of course, I'm still getting memory, I'm starting to get memory back, I don't have it back yet. So everything for myself just went downhill drastically for about five or ten more years because I didn't realize uh, what was going on at all, you know, people started dying and all the kinds of horrible stuff started happening and I just thought you know gee this is this isn't right what's happening you know well I ended up in in uh, more trouble than I thought possible you know and I just had to uh, flee from a whole part of the world just to get away from the from these people who I imagined uh, were doing this and in fact I was right to do so you know even though I didn't know it at the time 
So I think things have settled down a little bit now. But like you say, it's still, it's not good. No, there's okay. still some stuff going on. Now, for the audience that has not heard your video, can you enlighten them on, you know, when you were coming back, you were leaving Mars, you had two humanoids come up to you and ask you well, what? Tell them tell them what you're referring to so they know what's... What. Well, they just begged with us. They said, we're being leading these horrible, torturous lives up here in the tunnels. All we ever do is carry bones and stuff down to the fires for the ants. And these are two women, right, who just seem like um, human beings, but they're not, you see. And this is the biggest danger there is uh, for us, true human beings, going back into history, is that we've had these humanoids here all along. And they have a different brain construction from us. They have metallic content to their bodies and to their brains, and they are therefore 100% controllable by, via the psionic. You know, they are in fact part of the insect mentality chain, whereas true humans aren't. We can't be, we're not very telepathic because we have a skull, um, and neither are the reptilians generally, except for the much more highly evolved ones. And uh, we, uh, you know, it just got to the point where um, I finally realized that these things were, were human, and humanoid, but they were being controlled, absolutely controlled, 100%. And they themselves might not even think of that until all of a sudden it was like looking right through their eyes was the controlling insectoid life form, okay. which, which, means us, which means us no good. Just to put that in perspective, if you go back far enough into history, these humanoids, the troublemakers, have always been here. And a good example of one of them would be somebody like Napoleon Bonaparte, who was, in fact, one of these controllable um, drones and caused all of that trouble, which is not like it's written. Um, and when they discovered what he was, which they did by sticking a magnet to his head and finding out that he had this metal brain and he was something different, they just picked up rocks and stoned the guy to death on the spot. And that's what happened to Napoleon. So our history, of course, is just rubbish. It's it's all been rewritten many times. Yeah. But they have this memory of this character, Napoleon, who was <laughs> not not a, not a not an, a real human being. It's one of these humanoids. So this gets about as deep as as um, as as it gets because all of a sudden you got everybody looking at him. So, oh, is that one of them? Oh, the magnet doesn't stick to his head, you know, I guess he's okay. <laughs> crazy, crazy. But that's how it was, you know. And uh, these humanoids are the real danger because they will just look like, you know, nice. Usually they're fairly short, fairly stocky, and they're not very uh, intelligent. Generally, they're grade four, grade five intelligence, and they can't hold memories, as many memories as we can for as long, right? So they're the, the most effective weapon that these races ever had were, you know, uh, if a giant beetle shows up at your door and tells you to do something, well, you might obey it, but you can't have this thing walking around the streets. Sure. But anything that's humanoid can walk around and be part of society and get into the court system, get into the police, get into the whatever, and just sort of be there all along. So that's what I'm talking about when I say we were like infested or infected with these things. They were right in our society wow. as members of our government and everything else. Absolutely, and they've infiltrated the government big time. So these are – well, then wouldn't you, wouldn't you equate the politicians as these, these types of humanoids? Not necessarily at all. You know, I don't think um, they're intelligent enough to, to fool – um, a lot of uh, modern uh, people, but historically they were the, the means of control. So yeah, them or something like them is still probably the way they would go if you know they wanted to maintain control over the earth. They would you'd have to use either physical actual humanoids or the hologram projection idea or something like it. Now they do and, have and the humanoid you said they have the capacity to shape shift. They do within very small parameters. Okay. They can't get taller, shorter, 
um, they can change themselves, their face in particular, to look like somebody who's generally they resemble. Like you can't have a male turning into a female so easily, or you can't have somebody. And this, and this is how they messed with you, right? I mean, you oh, you allowed these two humanoids to come onto the ship. They came back with you to Earth, and then it ended up blowing your whole life apart. That's right. It, it caused um, all of the damage. But the deal was, we bring them back, but we're surrounded. We're being watched, not by the government or the CIA, by the Greys and other people, you know, that are part of this. Okay. Well, a few months went by, or longer, before they realized that these things were far more capable than they thought, because once they're uh, under control. It's like having the much more intelligent alien life form itself looking right through their eyes and acting through them. So this horrible psionic power comes right back through it like a uh. vessel. And uh, they are, in fact, a tool, you know, all of a sudden. And then, bang, they're just back to just being like, oh, no, I'm just going shopping. I'm just an ordinary person. Well, the stuff they were doing was, uh, you know, pretty horrific. Yeah. Well, okay, so I'd like to know your opinion. I'm not going to say you know exactly what's going on, but because of your lens and how amazing it is, what is your opinion of all of these heads of state, politicians, heads of the Vatican, mm. uh, bankers that are participating in these blood satanic ritual sacrifices of blood and flesh? Okay, now, first of all, that's a tough question because I know about <laughs> the so-called satanic baby blood drinking ring. Okay. Okay? First of all, it's not real uh, on one level. On one level. Um, yeah, because if people want to think that, I don't know who's accused of this, you know, Queen Liz and the Bush family and all of them, right? Well, there's no way that those people are um, anything like that. They're just, Queen Liz, for example, just normal, you know, really nice, ordinary people. Um, so, this gets difficult because this is the kind of thing you don't want to talk about because all along, this story of, uh, oh, we have a this satanic ring, we're going to kill an eight tonight, we do this thing, you know? Well... If there's people out there who want to believe in this and are willing to join, okay? You say, oh, yeah, we do this. It's like, okay, I'm in. I'll keep my mouth shut. Now you've got somebody you don't want anything to do with and you will not let in under any circumstances, okay? So it's a story that's been put forth all along in order to sort out anyone stupid enough or crazy enough to believe in it and then they're not let in, <laughs> okay? Because nobody but nobody wants to hear about, you know, kidnapping children and doing horrible things and eating them, you know, or whatever it is that they're being accused of. Uh, just to reassure people on that front, there's a couple of famous cases, for example, where huge, you know, British royal families or huge important uh, politicos have been seen at a site somewhere, and you know, ten children have disappeared and never been seen again. Okay, <clears throat> well, at a couple of those events, I was there. Okay, the children were not taken to the oven or the fridge; they were taken out of a horrific situation and given a better life by people with the power to do such a thing, you know, mm -hmm. as much as they could, using their own money, kind of thing. So it's, in fact, baloney, most of it. Anything that's true along those lines, like so-called satanic rituals where insane blood rituals and stuff go on, that will be our alien influence. Okay. That will not be human beings organizing and setting that up. I agree if, with if, that. Totally okay, agree. If the thing has been going on, I'm sure it was, going back into history, absolutely and for sure they've had these these powerful um, groups of, of people, and of course they're going to be the people in power who they use to do this, because yes. that's how it would work. 
So um, we shouldn't think that there's you know, chains of families, related people, or certain bloodlines of people that go back who are evil, who are doing these, these horrific things. It's just not true. Um, Interesting. Queen Liz and Phil are just really nice people. You know, they're just ordinary people who are really happy to be. And the same with the Bushes or anybody like that who you start to hear. I'll just go one, one more step on this. I remember David Icke appearing, okay, his very first appearance. And uh, I talked to him, and I was just like, whoa, you're getting into this? This is great, you know, but you can't go too far sort of thing. Well, he came out with the uh, reptilian um, hologram-based theory, which is great, which is real, which is like, whoa, that's how it would be done, and that's something worth thinking about, right? The other thing he did was go after these so-called chains of families and the Vatican and places like that. Now, the reason was he knew, and a lot of other people know, that these organizations and people are covering up information. Any pressure that you, you can bring on them, to bring to bear on them, any pressure at all is better than nothing. Let's get them to cough up what they know, right? Okay. So he started attacking uh, based on that, right? So half of what he does is, is exactly right, and the other half is is something else, right? It's He's trying to get these people to talk or to come up with their information, and it's not going to work. But it's the only way to attack that there is. And um, again, I'll just uh, say that I've been at some of these places where supposedly people were taken you know, and disappeared and probably put into the fridge or <laughs> into a satanic ritual. In fact, the opposite is true. So you don't have to really worry about, um, on an earthly level, you know, the royals or the, or the political families or the Rothschilds or whoever it is, being this satanic, organized, human thing. Anything that twisted or evil has always come from total outside possession of human beings who may, in the same way that I can't remember, and Randy Kramer can, and all kinds of other people can't remember certain parts of our lives, it would be it would be the same for these people if they were involved in anything really horrific. And I mean, we've been involved in some horrific stuff where I've been, where people have, things have happened, you know? Yeah. But it was never us, human beings, doing it. I see what you're saying. So, be, okay. So, let me get this right. So, you're you're basically saying that it's on a different plane of existence if it is occurring. That's right. Okay. And you're also saying that it's not the human element that's involved. It would be more the extraterrestrial, which I totally agree with. Yep. I've said Don't many, many that. times, human beings. If if you are a hundred percent human being, which that would be another question for you. If yeah. you're if you're a hundred percent of your human DNA blueprint, you don't even have the capacity to do that. That's pretty close to true, I think. Yeah. So I, I get what you're saying because now there's people that are going to come out of their seats and go, "You're so full of you know what," yeah. because well, they've there. literally seen it with their own two eyes. Yeah. Uh, well, the crazy rich. I've been in a few places too where I wonder what the hell is actually are they doing here? You know, are they going to end up killing somebody out there in that field or what? You know, and I'm not even sure what went down. Uh, because people do get together in these insane uh, get-togethers, and I know that there is um, alien uh, uh, presence and reason for this, because I know for a fact that the, a lot of the specific accusations that you can find on on the internet say where this famous person went here and then these children disappeared and were never seen again, true because they saved their life took them out and gave them a chance somewhere else with their own money and are in fact exactly the opposite of wow. what they're portrayed as. And in fact, I didn't want to talk about this because this has always been a way, it's just gone too far now that it's all out in public on the internet. It used to be such that if you wanted to get in, so to speak, all the way in, you know, to the uh, whatever you want to think of it as, um, you would hear this story about how, oh yeah, you know, we're all in, you know, and it ends up with the 
you know, the Queen and the big shots and the politicians and the big shots. And we do this thing, right? So we're going to go do this slaughter of these kids or whatever. We're going to eat them or something ridiculous. You know? And then if anybody was willing to go along with that and keep their mouth shut about it, you just kind of went, okay, next. So it was a way of sorting people out because uh, when you're dealing with this kind of stuff, there's, there's nothing really more important or... There's nowhere else to turn, right? If you're going to bring somebody in, they have to be tested. And there's no better way than that than to say, look, we're going to do something really horrific here, really terrible. Are you willing to keep your mouth shut? And if they say, oh, yeah, yeah, then you've got the wrong person and you don't let them in. You know, Jack, just a, just a couple of comments. Um, Galactic Connection, for whatever reason, myself and the people I work with, we have been designated as a primary, uh, I'm going to call us organization, uh, to assist in helping remove implants. Okay? Oh. And it's a world-renowned process. We've done thousands upon thousands of them. Great. Now, we've learned a lot from doing that. Mm -hmm. And... One of the things that, and I do a lot of research behind the scenes on things of this sort. And where I'm at right now, and as you know, I think everybody in the audience can agree, what you believed even three months ago <laughs> is not necessarily what you believe today. Because we're always open to new ideas, uh, expanding our way of seeing things and you know that's what being coming galactic means is being able to see a myriad of different ways to see the same exact thing and really exactly exactly expanding you consciousness you know you but with that said one of the things that i have noticed is when you take some of your prominent issues within society such as addiction okay, okay. Uh, it could be anything, Asperger's, um, bipolarism, you know, you name it. If you look at that and you uh, look at, a, a, let's say, a number of people that you're working with and you start diving into specific components as to what's causing that, mm. I am really getting to that place where I do believe that they have been hijacked by a specific type of extraterrestrial race that is literally running their Merkaba yeah. and is causing them to do things that they would never have done if they were 100% in their own uh, human, 100% sacred light. And so therefore, when you're looking at all these politicians, etc., and you hear all these horrible things, you know, I'm often saying to myself, okay, is that the original human divine spark within that guy? You know, like, let's pull, pull, pull out Bill Clinton. There are a lot of testimonies as to how many people he has been responsible for executing during his time of the presidency, okay? Um, but then you have how many other uh, Bill Clintons that were cloned Right. Okay. And then you have the Bill Clintons that were hijacked. Right. So this is where it gets super convoluted is like if there were like 50 Bill Clintons and some of them have been hijacked, some of them are extraterrestrial races that are running him, some of them are actually clones, you're not really sure who is the real Bill Clinton. Please stand up. Well, yeah. I mean, this is outside of my awareness uh, specific politicians down the earth. It's a funny thing. We used to run into all of them. I mean, they'd be around, you know, President Kennedy would be around or other huge bigwigs would be around. We just never paid any attention to them because they were just seemingly uh, figureheads. You know, we were doing things and they would be standing around waiting to see what happened kind of thing. They weren't doing anything themselves. And so there are groups of people out there assembled who, who do profit You'll hear about it. When these horrible events happen, you'll hear that these people are around watching, you know, watching it unfold rather than doing anything about it. Correct. And start to wonder about, um, you know, who's, who's real and who's not. Clones, I don't know. Um, I do know that on Mars we talked about it and there was only, there was something to do with you can only clone something so many times before it becomes 
And I don't know that human beings clone as well as um, other creatures. But as far as the earthly stuff and the politicians and so forth, I think that in, in ancient times, it was just all true. You know, they had absolute power over the, the masses. And I don't know how true that is anymore. Mm. I wouldn't want to talk about it. I don't know anything at all about, uh, you know, for example, Bill or, or, uh, right. Right. or any of them, you know, because you get cut off, you know. If, if you're in my position, you're on the ground. Okay? It's called being on the ground. And I'm not allowed off the ground. Okay, so I can't get within shouting distance of, of, of anybody that's supposedly connected. You know, it's it's kind of like if you set out, if you're an average person, you set out to get a hold of somebody who's famous. You can't even get a hold of them, mm -hmm. let alone find out what they're actually doing. But I think there are enough people out there and groups now that are keeping an eye on <clears throat> on things. I'd just like to calm down any of them that are hysterically thinking that there's just, you know, they've got these people targeted, these families and the Windsors and the Bushes and whoever it is, as this organized thing that is, in fact, the problem. And that's just absolutely not true. You know, I know that. Interesting. That I do know for a fact. You know, that's that. It's interesting to have that perspective because uh, it really, you know, it goes back to what you were talking about earlier. And, and that is holograms. Ah, boy. Well, and it goes back to holographic uh, presentation of the information. And this, this is, is another cool. reason why we're all so frustrated, Jack. Yeah. Well, if, if, if you're super intelligent uh, alien race, our brains are just little chemical blips that they can pick up like a cell phone. That's amazing. Wow, wow, you know? uh, and they can make us see things that um, that aren't real right they can take over somebody's body and be there and then leave and the person will not even know what they've done you know so this doesn't give everybody an excuse but it does provide you know explanation for a lot of things that just seem way off the deep end you know because I know that there's a lot of people who view all of the alternate media very skeptically, and, and they'll read all of this stuff about the reptilians. Go, so that's nonsense. That's garbage. You know, nobody. Ought, you know, that's not true. Well, a lot of it isn't true. It goes too far. You know, and, and like I said, they're attacking these people based on the fact that they know that they have information. They don't know what that information is, other than that it's probably ET related, and that we all deserve to know that, and let's get it out and so forth. So they're going to attack the Vatican, they're going to attack the Queen, and they'll attack the Bushes as hard as they can, using anything they can to, to try to force uh, something out of them, right? And the fact is that most of these people are, in fact, just normal people who happen to have really good jobs, you know, and are, are in and are on the gravy train and all the rest of it. But you can't single out anybody as being, you know, there's some kind of evil cabal of, of these higher, higher families and stuff. That's a story that they've always put forth deliberately to sort out the nut bars so that you don't get anybody coming in who's actually crazy and will all of a sudden turn around and do something insane once they're so far in that they're dangerous, right? Mm. You've got to have cooler, calmer, more intelligent people uh, in the core of the program, able to keep keep things under control, because okay. don't forget we wanted and everybody wanted disclosure to happen uh, way back 50 years ago. It just couldn't, you know, it just couldn't happen, and uh, we tried. And so you need people there who are not going to just fly off the handle and, and do something crazy. So I uh, just, you know, I don't believe at all in these. Uh, families and chains of, uh, of people that are doing this to you because they know perfectly well that this story has been put out for a long long time so this for, has been for, going on for a, this, long. this story has been going on for much longer than we even realize is what you're saying that's right and, the, and anything actually insane that does get out of control and you have these crazy groups of people doing crazy things well that's going to be our alien you know not understandable by us particularly influence. Uh, you know, yeah, so, so basically, no 
you, you, what you're saying then is, is if it's happening, which I, I personally believe it is, but um, if it's happening, because there's just so many people that are coming out of the closet that are admitting to even Many. being there, you know, and part and seeing it and observing it, participating in it. Uh, but I've always felt that there's this very dark, uh, malevolent, parasitic, mm. extraterrestrial presence that takes over is. that human body. That's what it is. It's nothing else. There's no such thing as a group of royals or something going around going, oh boy, what kids can we get our hands on, you know? Uh, it's absurd. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I know these people. I've been present when these alleged, you know, kidnappings and horrible things have happened. And in fact, the opposite has happened. They're just normal, nice people generally who are quite happy to be, you know, oh boy, I'm, I'm doing really good. You know, I got a, <laughs> I'm, I'm a royal or I'm a, you know, a successful, famous politician. Well, that's a fairly uh, good life, and I can't see running around, you know, being part of some insane, you know, killing. There's nothing worse, right? You can't think of anything worse. You can't than think of anything. It's and just doing terrible things to them. It's too much. You know, it makes people just go numb even thinking about it. And the fact is, it's just a story. Well, and or or it's really leg, it's really legitimizing that we truly are in a matrix. Well, yeah, that's what it's saying. Not that certain. You got very faint again. Not that certain types of human beings are these evil, living right inside of our culture and running it, you know, from the government or whatever. They're satanically uh, preying on us. No. I can't hear you. Right. Well, there's no there's no uh, satanic group, you know, running your life. Okay. You know, that's that's all I want to say to most people because I see these stories and I just go, that's ridiculous. That's way over the top. I was there. I know what happened that day, and no children were harmed in any way, and no human being that I've ever been in contact with, and that includes everybody, all up through the hierarchy of the people doing this stuff, would ever dream of. Uh, of harming a child for any reason whatsoever, just like like anybody else, you know. Well, so perhaps, that has to be. You perhaps, know, I don't care how many people show up, you know, because this story spreads, and you will find that there are people who just really uh, are victimized, and maybe have experienced something, but it is in fact not, you know, our leaders planning and and, and carrying this out, unless, like you say. It's part of the, the alien matrix, and that forces people to confront this idea of, of super powerful extraterrestrials rather than blaming it on human beings, which is a little too easy, if you ask me. That's a really good point. And the other thing is, you pointed this out before, which is, number one, they have the total capacity, as they did to you, okay, to embed themselves in each of these very higher profile individuals uh, into their families, their friends, their work, etc., literally creating a stage that you believe is true when in fact they have the ability to not only, uh, you know, transform their face. Yeah. So, you know, it's very interesting that you're, that, that you're presenting it this way because it's, it's like if it was their intention they would take some of the most high-profile people and transform it to their face yep. to give it more meat to be yep. able to, to, you know, that's very interesting. So I guess if you want to think of it as possession, mm -hmm. fine. But this is not demonic possession. It's just these much more powerful creatures to whom our minds are very simple little chemical stews that they can just, they can make you do anything, basically. The really powerful ones. The, um, well, there you go. They can make the you do anything. Central, the, the saucer aliens are this way, okay? When I stood in that, sat in that saucer, and they showed me places all over the galaxy, and I asked questions, and they showed me this and showed me that, they effectively could make you jump off a cliff, you know, and think you were getting into bed or something, you know? And just basically uh, very uh, able to control anybody who, who they're, um, they're in direct you know, there's two there's two things you're bringing up here too, which is number one, 
where is this reality really taking place? Right. Okay. Is it on, you know, because you're very much talking about on the ground physical reality. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, mm -hmm. what if these sacrificial types things are not really of this reality? They're perhaps in like a, a higher or a different dimensional reality. Who knows what that is, right? Right. I think the second thing is uh, the just the suggestion alone that there is such a much larger force that is completely capable of controlling everything and everyone. Well, or certainly anything within their their sphere. Um, the further you, again, the further you go back into history, the more this horrific gatherings and witches and, and, and horrific stuff is possible. It's like I said, this comes right up into the 50s and 60s before it, it starts to break down at all, right? Okay. This is, this is what people can't deal with. They, they think, well, no, no, that's just happened in the 60s. That's the same as today, right? No, it isn't. Um, everything has changed Very much drastically so. since the 1950s, right? Yes. It looks the same, but it, but it isn't, right? Uh, we had no idea even that we were... Uh, you know, controlled by these things. Then all of a sudden, um, the truth broke through to a lot of people, and then other people started hearing about this. And so, when you jump online now, you get people just hysterically attacking certain aspects of what they see as like, no, no, it's these reptilian bloodlines. No, it's this type of alien. No, it's that. You know. So, of course, this is all going to be a smokescreen too, and the, and the real. Um, Truth will not be so uh, complex, uh, even though I mean it's complex, but it won't be. Uh, it won't be the human beings doing it because it's way up right. above our ability to to pull this off, right? This right, is right. Starting to take shape, so we have to just more or less hold on here and go. Wait a minute, we're not going to act on a bunch of stories from the 1950s, 40s, from the ancient times, from this rumor. Oh, somebody posts up that this these children disappeared. Well, I'm telling you I was there and they didn't. Nobody was hurt or killed. So what are you raving about this as if you know that you're on to something here? You know, and this is why one of the main reasons why I had to start talking was I just can't stand to see people you know, it used to be more or less private. These, you know, this this thing about this is this terrible ring of child killers. Oh, do you want to come in? You know, you do. Okay, goodbye. Right, but now it's on the internet as if it's everybody's business, and anybody can go in there and go, oh look, you know. They, they, and it's uh, all over the world because people yeah, are coming oh, forward and telling people, you know, whistleblowers. Yeah, you know? people don't don't do that, you know, and so we do. It does lend more weight everything that we're leading to here which is this other world and other other more powerful minds than ours and uh, that's just how it is and that's the hardest thing for people to deal with is they want to say oh aliens yeah fill me in come on i got a, i got an hour or two here just tell me <laughs> what it is come on we government expose come on disclose and it, you're just like, yeah, you're not ready for it. You know, oh, yeah, I am. You know, and it's just like, okay, here, go experience five minutes of, you know, of the psionic memory of, of this solar system. And you would come back just glassy eyed and shivering and not able to say a word, you know. So it's heavy. It's, it's uh, heavy intellectually and spiritually and, and in every way that there is. And so to break it all down so that everybody in the world can, can be able to, to take it in is a long, and uh, frustrating process. And nobody's going to pay us for it because they don't have to believe any of it. All right. You know? Now, what is what is your opinion about um, and you know, especially from of any of your psionic, uh, you know, awakenings? Uh, what is your opinion about that? There's been several that have come forward, anywhere from twelve to fifteen beings, really solely that are responsible for running this whole matrix. May well be, but uh, not something that I, I I can get a grasp on. I, I do know that down down um, where we were when this was all happening, it just uh, it just happened in steps. And the word that I come up with is numb. Where everybody went numb, right? As we realized, oh no, you know this is real, and yet the world's not ready for it. And we're dealing with it. What do we do? You know? Wow. Nobody knew. Nobody knew what to do. Nobody. 
There was nobody who uh, who said, "Oh, well, we just do this and this." So if the, if there is these twelve or fifteen families or people controlling the purse strings, is effectively how it ends up. Um, then I'm interested in knowing who they are, but I can't find them. <laughs> you know? Well, I think this, this is, is on thing. a this is on a extraterrestrial or beyond. Right. Oh, okay, all right. You were talking the other day about uh, these little ETs and stuff that you had uh, run into, and just the other day I got a look. Uh, I don't know. I was just showing all of a sudden what I think is like four or five races that are uh, resident. It used to be three. We might be up to five now that live in this solar system that are considered residents here, right? And, and their race may be in other solar systems too, but they are technically registered in this solar system. Well, then there's probably, um, you know, representatives of each of their uh, groups at some point who sit or look at the Earth. But I think they're really just watching us to see how we deal with this emergence into this so-called uh, galactic consciousness. Um, it's just awareness of the whole thing. And they're just sitting back going, well, this could take 100 years or 50 years or whatever it's going to take, but it's not our, really our business to force this on this race. It's slowly starting to break through here and there and everywhere. And they're just watching, you know, um, to see what we do. So I don't think they're exerting too much control other than hopefully in positive ways. And in ways, um, for example, human beings have to be protected from ourselves uh, in certain ways. Yeah. Is we can't we can't be handed any uh, cer certain technologies. Okay, that can't become public information. Well, we've already day. been there, done that. Yeah, well, it only takes one person. <laughs> Atlantis so is a good planet. example. So they've been going around making sure that you know things like that are extremely dangerous to this young you know, race. Yeah. race have been uh, have been dealt with. So it'd be more like babysitting than it would be controlling. Yeah, no in a lot of ways. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, and my other question to you too is: Can you be a little bit more uh, clarifying for the audience about the trisexual race? All right, I'll just describe it. Um, the story up on Mars was on them. Is they're the masters? Okay, that's their name on the Earth. As far as human beings concerned, the masters. As far as the insect race is concerned, the masters. Up above us, light, everything. They, they, they were infinitely superior in ancient times. So they were our masters. They were our gods. They were our devils. They were everything. Mm. Um, that uh, was superior to us you know, in every way. Well, um, we, we, they're just extremely unlikely. You know, who ever heard of a trisexual insectoid like one where each is different? You know, a wasp like female, we have a, like a water bear uh, male, and we have a huge, almost like a pet, 30 foot long serpent that doesn't really take part in the flying the ship. Of course, not a serpent, it's a warm blooded insect life form, right? Okay. I was showing them hovering up in the clouds where they live most of their lives. And the, the snake-like creature could get out of the saucer and just sort of float near it inside the gravitational field that it projects. And it would be out there sun lolling in the sun and crawling around in the air outside of the ship, right? While they're, you know, just lounging up in the clouds. <laughs> well, you know, they're extremely unlikely. And they, 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 I asked them where they came from, and it was somewhere back towards Galactic Central where they evolved under extreme radiation, under extreme gravity, mm. and, uh, and you know, they're huge, so they have large brains, and, and um, one interesting thing about them is that the saucer technology itself turns out to be something they found. They just Ooh. found it one day. They found a ship that had crashed. They don't even know where it's from. It could be from another galaxy, and they, they had this technology that they could recreate and sort of understand how it worked, but they didn't much care about that. They just used it for power, you know, and to take off into the galaxy. So they're very much like the, you know, the mother spider sending the little spiderlings out into the, into the woods to each to make its own web and its own, and its own life, right? Um, 
they want a planet rather than just a, a little part of a tree or the corner of your room, right? And so it's the same mentality. It's it's the ancient galaxy where everything was very uh, cruel, okay, and just no such thing as laws or, or anything like it. Um, so they're just extremely unlikely. I mean, why would there be three different creatures in this weird trisexual unit? It's really, uh, they form a circle in, uh, when they have their get-togethers, and the, the psychic, psionic end of it is, t is like part of the pleasure to them in a way that it's hard for humans t to get a handle on. But they showed up here and just took over the planet, uh, started breeding creatures up to their liking, making giant creatures. And they just absolutely are right into owning a solar system, you know, or a few planets. In the same way that we would want to have a house or a car, you know. <laughs> it's really that simple, right? And it's very hard for people to understand that these things would be almost adolescent in their... Um, in their, you know, they just have this, eh, we own that whole solar system, let's just play toy soldiers with it, almost, you know, and you talk to them, and they're just like, just, just don't really just don't care, you know, they're indifferent to human um, reality in the way that we would say, ah, oh, well, the sheep, the dogs, you know, the, the horses, yeah, there are pets and everything, we take care of them, but we don't really, you know, care much what they think, you know. So that's the attitude, and, uh, and just the amount of power, the amount of physical power is shocking to behold. The fact that they never sleep. Uh, really? And, you know, and, uh, you know uh, and the fact that they uh, basically have had human beings as pets, slaves, playthings for so long that it just seems like the natural order of things. Uh. And it's like the old science fiction idea where we're like the ants, you know, and they are the... And the ants are the owners, and we're the little, right. little bugs. So I'm sure it goes up another level over their head, where they are the small, insignificant, not very powerful, and so on, up the ladder, right? But uh, where we were in this, in this part of the galaxy, this was a wild planet and a wild solar system for many tens of thousands of years, and that's just how it was. And without confronting that, and without confronting the giant cruel, early galaxy uh, insectoid life forms, we don't confront the galaxy. You have to get that out of the way and say, we were this wild, insane place, but that's over. You know, that's over not that long ago, which is what's scary about it, but it is over, and we're now a member of this, of this uh, galaxy and are registered as, as such on this, on this planet, right? Well, if most of the people on the Earth can't accept that or don't deal with that, then um, we're not really there yet. So that makes this, you know, just as interesting and as and as uh, just as uh, deep of a, of a mess yeah. <laughs> as you could as you could think up, right? So uh, if we do some small part towards getting rid of uh, all of this ancient. Uh, violent, you know, savage, paranoid, crazy uh, stuff that, that, that that's happening because of the repression of this all along, then we've done the, you know, something good. That is just crazy. Yeah. Well, before we tie this up, I have to hear, when you tapped into the records and you asked who and what is God, what did you get back? Well, that's the bee planet. That's what I was showing. I said, is there a God? And this was the last question I asked at about the end of a list of 20 or so more questions that I asked just at the end of our tour around Mars when I was still in the saucer with them. And I just sat there and said, what's this? How does your saucer work? Where are you from? How old are you? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? What about these creatures? Who? What happened in ancient times on Earth? What was, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff and the last question was oh what do you know about God or a supreme being that rules over the and they, and they were sort of like what, the entire universe you know the physical physical universe which is one of a couple that they know about <laughs> and I said yeah right and there was this moment of 
well, no, we don't know about any supreme being that controls all of reality as we know it. But I can show you this. And so we were shown the planet with the incredibly huge hall beyond. Uh, I just couldn't believe that it could be real. It was so big. But um, that's where every intelligent life form in this galaxy, which is millions, or certainly hundreds of thousands of uh, solar systems that have intelligent spacefaring life, we walked into that place and it just stretched off and up into the distance. And every, you know, we were represented there in a little pantheon of the Earth and the Sun and our solar system. And then there was little representations or holograms of, uh, of all of the races here, the human beings and the saucer aliens and the greys. Fascinating. Okay. But this just went off into the distance, into this hall that was bigger than, um, than you can describe. And I mean, it was just so big that your mind could barely understand what you were looking at, right? Well, that indicates that there's hundreds of thousands of intelligent life forms in this um, galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, and that we're one of the humanoid types, and then there's all the reptilian and all the insect and all the other, um, I don't know what, um, types of aliens, and there are hundreds, thousands of them registered, not just that are known, right? Well, that was just their way of saying, yeah, uh, every one of these races has God, okay? So, the, the, the upside of that is for any, any of the religious issues, which I'm fully prepared to talk about, because I think it's just great, is because um, it's like they're saying, no, not even we know. Nobody really knows. Yes, there is, but we don't, we don't have contact with that. Yeah. Here's 287,000 million races <laughs> that have that same idea that, yes, have God. You know? So apparently, there is yeah. uh, out somewhere, somebody, but it would be so big that, you know, because there is a larger dimension. We can get into that next time. Yeah, that's I would how, love to. Well, and, and also, uh, Jack, you're, you're also talking about, are we referring to source itself or are we referring to uh, the God that actually created this particular solar system? You that's know what beyond, I mean? So the, the 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 good answer there is that's beyond even the most advanced uh, and oldest races in this galaxy still look at that like a mystery. Interesting. So that's really encouraging because uh, you know you, they could have easily said, "Oh yes, there is, and here it is," you know, <laughs> or, or something crazy, right? And, and instead they went, oh, "No, I don't." I imagine there might be, and they had this idea, this look of sort of like, well, I, uh, there's a question I can't answer, right? Which is the first and only question they couldn't answer. Right. Uh, but they did say, well, look at this. You know, here's here's the galaxy that you live in, and you're one of these many, many, many. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I have to. I, I thank you very much for contacting me. I really appreciate it. Um, I find this kind of stuff just absolutely fascinating, and I cannot wait to dive into some other topics with you next go around. And for all of you listening, please do me a favor. Feel free to send in. Uh, now, don't make it really long. Remember my workload, guys, please. Uh, just send me simple, quick questions that you would like me to ask Jack. Um, and remember again, he's very much a stickler. If he doesn't know the ant, if he didn't participate in it, he's going to tell you flat out. Uh, but let's stick to topics. You know, I think that would work well with Jack. Uh, and we'll see what kinds of things come out of this. And in the meantime, Jack, you're going to be receiving more psionic uh, <laughs> uploads, downloads, whatever loads. And uh, hopefully we can expand the information that's coming out. I think I think it's really fascinating. So uh, if you would like to contact Jack, you can reach him at alpha bot b o t at fastmail dot f m right. Okay. And that's that's it. He's keeping this. He's been in the low. Uh, he's been 
how do you say that? Living, living underneath the radar for quite some time now. So he uh, he's perfectly happy with all of us re reaching him through email. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the best way. Yeah. So um, thank you, uh, Jack. Again, this is Johnny Alpha. And he does have a couple of videos up there on YouTube. And then just start looking for our video series up at Galactic Connection. In the meantime, uh, remember, we have our radio show every Tuesday afternoon from 3 to 4.55. We're going to split this into two parts. Okay. And um, let me see what else. If you have any questions about the implant removal process, you know how to reach me. There are contact us emails all over the place on the site. I know it's a huge site, but enjoy it. We are coming up with, uh, we're getting really close to making some other announcements. So again, just sending everybody love and light, and uh, we're just trying to figure things out for this solar system, universe, who knows, right? All right. <laughs> just to mention if there's such a thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, everybody take care. We, uh, we've really enjoyed this today, and um, really we'll, we'll talk to everyone soon. Lots of love, and you guys take care. Same. Bye.